Welcome everyone to Westview's Worship Experience Online. I'm so glad that you're able to join us here on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you are watching from. Hopefully before you click this link, you were able to experience some other elements of worship, whether it be worship music or scripture reading. Uh, those are listed below on our YouTube channel or if you're part of our mailing list, that gets emailed out every week. If you would like to be a part of our email list, uh, please contact Christine and we would be happy to put you on there or give us a comment and we'll put you in touch with those resources. Before we get into our worship, we would like to let you know a little bit about what's happening at Westview and some of the experiences that you can be a part of. First, I'd like to remind you, we still have life groups online. We have several people who've taken advantage of an opportunity to connect with people during this time when we're all so far apart from one another. We have a group that's meeting on Wednesday night. We have another that's connecting on Mondays. Uh, some are using videos, some are using phones. So there's lots of different ways that people are connecting. And if you haven't let us know that you'd like to be a part of one of these groups, please be in touch with me, Pastor Tina, that's tina at westbybaptist.ca. And I'd love to connect you with one of these groups or maybe even create a new one where you can connect with one another, uh, pray with one another and support each other during this season. I'm also really excited to share with you about Alpha Online. Alpha is an opportunity for you to go deeper into your faith and gain a better understanding of what it means to be a Christian. So we're launching these groups on June 14th and we invite you to join us. If you have any questions about faith or if you have friends that you think would like to dig a little bit deeper, please be in touch with Ann Butler. Her email will be posted here below and a let her know that you'd like to join in or be in touch with her if you do have any questions about what it means to be a part of Alpha Online. We're really excited about this opportunity and we hope that if you are seeking, searching and just want to know a little bit more that you will check it out and we would love to see you there. Also, when our service is over or this video is over, normally when we worship together we spend time in the gym where we have coffee, snacks and we reconnect with one another. So this is kind of a drop-in that we have set up and at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, we invite you to come join into our virtual gym and we would love to see you there. If you look in your email, check uh, a link in the worship service or in our Wednesday Connect and you should be able to get in and we would love to see you there. Now we'd like to take some time to share with you a little bit about Westview's Food Cupboard. It's something that we offer the third Wednesday of every month and due to the quarantine, things have changed, but we've been able to continue with this ministry. So we'd like to take a opportunity to show you how this ministry has been continuing. Uh, we thank you for your prayers and your support, but let's take a look at how we are able to support those in our ministry right now through our food cupboard. Hello Westview, it's Liz Pelman Webb and uh, I'm here at the Food Cupboard on a Wednesday. Uh, for the last two Wednesdays I've had the privilege of giving out food to our community, which I don't normally get to do because on Wednesday mornings during the school year I'm at work. Um, but I'm able to flex my schedule and be able to work with my girls to hand out food to our community. Hi everyone, we miss you. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Uh, we had lots of fun at the food cupboard handing out food. We got a lot handed out and it was fun to be able to help out some people during quarantine. Okay. Hi everybody. Um, just wanted to let you know we had a great morning at the food cupboard this morning. There were uh, 15 households represented with about, uh, we served about 50 people all together. So a little bit smaller than last month, uh, fewer people, but still a good morning. Um, and everybody was happy to see us and we were happy to see them as well.
morning, everyone. Today, I have a fun science experiment to try with you. I have a pretty crazy claim that I'm going to make. I am going to cut a hole in this piece of paper that's big enough for me to walk through. Do you think I can actually do it? I mean, this piece of paper is smaller than me. How could I make a hole big enough for me to walk through? If you'd like, you could give it a try at home and see if you can do it. Maybe test to see if you think I'm telling the truth. All you need is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and a pair of scissors. Well, some of you may have tried it, but I still have the question, do you think I am telling the truth? Can I make a hole big enough for me to walk through? Some of you say, no way, that's not even possible. And some of you believe that what I'm saying is true. For those of you doubting Thomases out there, I'm going to show you that it is true and it is possible to make a hole big enough in this paper for me to walk through. So now I'm going to show you how to make a hole big enough in this piece of paper that you can walk right through it. The first thing you need to do is to fold your paper in half. Then you need to take your scissors and make two cuts. You need to make sure you make your cut from the side with the fold. So you need to make one cut on the far end. Don't get quite to the edge, leave a little space there. And the same cut on the other end of your piece of paper. Getting close to the edge, but not quite all the way there. Once you have made your two cuts, you need to open up your piece of paper. And then you see where you have this fold here, you need to make a cut. Make sure you don't cut this part, just the part in between. Again, make sure you don't cut here. What we have is this open part here. Now right now it's not big enough for a person to walk through so we do need to make a few more cuts. You need to fold your paper in half again as it was before. Make sure you line up your lines well and I have a paper prepared here to show you how you need to cut. You need to do zigzag cuts so from the open end of your paper cut in but leave a little space and then go from the opposite side, cut in and still leave a little space back and forth all the way until you get to the end. Now that you've cut your paper in the zigzag pattern, you can open your paper up. Be very careful because your paper will be very delicate. Once you have it open, you can slowly stretch it and you see that in the middle it opens up and you have a very long edge. Now let's give it a try. All right, I'm ready to try it out. We cut our piece of paper and this is what it looks like all stretched out. It definitely looks big enough for me to go through, so let's give it a try. I can step through, and there we go. I got through that small piece of paper and cut a fairly large hole. Now earlier, when I was challenging you with this experiment, I used the phrase Doubting Thomas for those of you who didn't believe that I could do it. Did you know that this phrase actually comes from the Bible? Because there was a man in the Bible named Thomas, and he doubted that when Jesus died, that he actually came back to life and rose again. Now Thomas needed to actually see Jesus in person. He needed to see Jesus' hands, to see the marks where they had hurt him, and when he was able to see that Jesus was actually who he said he was, he was amazed. Now, he had a conversation with Jesus, and after Thomas discovered that Jesus was actually risen from the dead, 
This is what Jesus said to him. Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, 29. So with our challenge today, some of you believed without seeing the end result. Some of you had faith in my word, but some of you needed to see it. And that's what it was like for Thomas. He needed to see the truth. And it was great that he could see that Jesus was alive. And it was great for us that we could see that this experiment worked. But when it comes to faith today, we just can't walk up to Jesus and touch him to see that he's alive. We do have the words in the Bible, though, that tell us it's true. And that helps us to know what we need to believe in, even without seeing it. Hey everyone, it's Phil, and welcome again to our virtual worship. I'm really glad that you've joined us, whether you are a longtime Westview person or whether you're maybe just checking us out. We're glad that you're here, glad that you can be a part of this uh, worship together. We just finished singing a song called Jesus Strong and Kind, and I hope that the words resonated with you at some level, whether it was that you sang them, remembering your own experiences of Jesus' strength, Jesus' mercy in your own life, or maybe it resonated because you are recognizing your own longing and your own need for strength and for mercy. And as a follower of Jesus, I am convinced that the strength and mercy we need to live life and to meet God face to face only comes through Jesus Christ. When we look at the life of Jesus, we see that that strength, that kindness, that mercy, they drew crowds to him. People were looking for that. And we not only see it in Jesus' physical ministry, we also see it when Jesus has risen from the grave, that he commissions his disciples to go and continue the ministry in his name, and then Jesus returns to heaven. The, the followers of Jesus, the apostles, the disciples, they continue this ministry. And once again, we see crowds that follow. Uh, they are longing for the the news of someone this strong this kind they're longing for hope and for mercy and they are finding it in jesus christ even when jesus isn't physically there of course not everyone was happy about that it wasn't a message that was well received by everyone and that's what brings us to our scripture passage today which is in acts chapter 5 verses 25 to 42 and we're coming partway through the account of the leaders of the early church, the early group of Christians, uh, we call them apostles. They have been teaching and healing people in the city of Jerusalem, but leaders in Jerusalem are getting jealous of what they're doing and the crowds that are following them. And so they have them arrested. The apostles are thrown in jail and then through the night, God miraculously springs them. He releases them from jail. And that's where we pick up. It says, Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. 
Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Have you ever started something thinking that it would be a lot of fun and then quickly found out otherwise? Uh, we can get disappointed, disillusioned by those kinds of situations. I, uh, I, I can think of a few times, one time, and I know I've shared this with the congregation before, that uh, I went on a mission trip when I was a teenager. And, and it was interesting, the mission organization advertised the different opportunities kind of like it was a travel brochure. Uh, talking about all the sites that you would see and uh, and you know it was a, a great time to experience another country and see different sites but the fact was when I got there it was a lot of work it was a lot of physical work it was a lot of emotional work uh, a group of people who didn't know each other suddenly thrust together trying to get along trying to find a way to uh, to cooperate in a very different environment and it was hard uh, it's uh, it, it, If you are expecting that it's just going to be fun, if it's just going to be easy, then it would be enough to make you give up. Now, I think sometimes when we look at faith, we can come in with wrong expectations. Uh, as a Christian, I believe that God has offered me mercy in my life. As I've said, Jesus died for my sins. He rose again so that I could have a whole new life. But part of what he has done is he has given me a purpose and he's given all of his followers a purpose. We're on a mission. And the last two weeks, we've talked about that mission. And uh, God will use us in spite of ourselves, but he actually wants us to be on board with that mission. And that mission is work. There's an analogy of whether this life as a follower of Jesus Christ is like being on a cruise ship or whether it's like being on a battleship. A cruise ship is all about me, my comfort, my pleasure, my preferences. But being on a battleship is all about a purpose that's bigger than myself and submitting to a higher authority and following through with that in order to accomplish that purpose. The disciples in this passage show us that it really is more in line with that battleship imagery because they, they ended up in prison. They ended up being flogged. They ended up with leaders in the city very angry with them and you know furious, yelling at them, telling them to stop what they were doing. The fact is that when we are on a mission and we face hardships, the hardships reveal truth about us and about what we say we believe. Uh, now, as I said, I, we have been over the last couple of weeks talking about this, and, and two weeks ago, we looked at the fact that God can use us even when we are unwilling. Uh, God will use us in spite of ourselves, but that doesn't mean that we're actually in a relationship of, of trust with God. Last week, we talked about the fact that we can actually be willing and God equips us. He gives us everything that we need for that purpose. But we can get stalled because we are so locked and focused on what we want that we forget what it is that God is actually doing. Now, the disciples in this passage recognize that God had called them 
to give testimony with their mouths about who Jesus is, what he has done, and what that means for our lives. And they went ahead and they did that. And they did that even though it meant that they were thrown in prison. Uh, You know, you look at the progression of what happened in this story that we read. They're thrown in prison. They're released. They start telling people about Jesus again. They get hauled in front of the Sanhedrin, which was like the Supreme Court of the Jewish nation. They get hauled in front of them and uh, they get told, we we told you to stop talking about this guy, this man, this name. They won't even name him. Um, and, And Peter, who's the head of the apostles, comes back and says, we have to obey God rather than human beings. Uh, there's a higher authority here. Uh, so they've been told, they've been thrown in prison, they've been told to stop what they're doing, and then at the very end, before they're released, they're flogged. Now, I think that there are a lot of us, if we had that experience, we probably would say, you know what, I'm going to back down. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Uh, this isn't worth it. But what we see revealed is that the disciples, the apostles who, who had known Jesus, who had seen him die, who, who saw him when he was alive again, who watched him go back up to heaven, they were so convinced of all of this that it was worth it. There was more hope in declaring the name of Jesus there was, than there was in their own personal comfort. And I wonder how true that is for us. We live in the opulent West. We live lives of luxury, many of us, and and even when we feel like we don't have much, we have so much more than people in other parts of the world. We're very well off as a country. But that can mislead us into thinking that that's really what life is all about. It's about being comfortable, being entertained, having my needs met, The apostles thought the opposite. They were willing to give all of that up in order to have the chance to say the name of Jesus and to tell people the story of what he had done for them. Hardships reveal the truth. Hardships show that they believed this with all their heart. This was not just something that they'd made up. If you make up a story about someone make up a story about someone rising from the grave and then people start attacking you for it, why would you keep going? Wouldn't you just say, you know what, I I made that up and back off? Because if it's a lie, why would you trade all of your comfort for it? Hardship reveals the truth. And verse 26 in this passage actually shows us that the people of Jerusalem had taken note of that. You know, when the authorities went to arrest the apostles and and to bring them in, they, they, they could have used full force. I mean, these were technically escapees from prison. But instead, they go and they gently invite them back to talk to the leaders of, of the Jewish nation. And uh, they were afraid of the people. They were afraid that the people who had found hope and healing in the name of Jesus would see these men being mistreated and would rise up in revolt. Uh, They had a reputation. In spite of the hardships, people saw them still saying the name of Jesus, healing in his name, and telling the truth about what he had done. And that was convincing. That was convicting. This situation and the suffering, the hardships that the apostles went through also showed that there was a more reliable authority. Uh, Now, the apostles were very respectful of the authorities who dragged them in, who put them under arrest, who flogged them. They were respectful, but they had to name the truth, which was God is the higher authority. And Christians have always believed that. We, we want to respect our authorities, our governments, and in fact, Scripture commands us to. But there's a tipping point. And the tipping point is this. When a government or an authority tells us that we need to deny the name of Jesus or that we need to stop talking about him and sharing him, 
we don't believe that we can do that because Jesus told us we have to. Jesus, who rose from the grave, who is God in the flesh and proved it by rising, by rising from the grave, has authority that's greater than any authority on earth. They, the apostles, were willing to obey a higher authority, and they were willing to suffer for it. It raises the question for us, who is the authority that we listen to? Yes, we listen to our government, and we're, we're doing that right now. Uh, with the lockdown that uh, COVID-19 has brought, we have listened to our authorities because we see them operating in our interests, in the interests of all people. Uh, we see them doing their job well. They're not denying our faith. They're not asking us to deny our faith. Yes, they have asked us to stop gathering together in worship, but we actually haven't stopped gathering. We've just gathered in a new way. We respect our authorities, but we also recognize that there is a higher authority. And that authority has asked us to name the name of Jesus and to be pre prepared uh, at all times to tell people about the hope we have found in Jesus Christ. The hardships that the apostles experienced also revealed who was at the core. Um, at the very end of this account, the apostles are asked to step out of the room and this high council, the Supreme Court called the Sanhedrin is still meeting and a well-respected leader named Gamaliel stands up and he says, listen, we have seen down through the years that other people have have tried to rile the people up, but as soon as the leader of that movement is killed, the movement ends. The followers disperse. And this will be no different if it's not from God. He had the wisdom to recognize that you don't stand in the way of what God is doing. And that if God isn't doing it, then it's not going to have a long shelf life. So he knew that these men, if they were truly acting on behalf of God, that the message would continue to spread no matter what the Sanhedrin decided to do to them. So very wisely he said, let them go and let's watch this play out. Gamaliel was telling the Supreme Court Let's see who's really at the core of this. And I think today we have the opportunity to watch that happen as well. Uh, you know, sometimes we wish that the government would be more on our side. We wish that our friends and neighbors would, uh, would all just rally around the message of Jesus Christ. But we live in a time where Christianity, the message of Jesus, is one of many options and people can pick and choose what they believe. If this is a message that is truly from God, it won't be stopped. And we don't need to worry about it. The apostles certainly weren't worried. They weren't worried about opposition from authorities. They weren't worried about being thrown in prison. They weren't worried about being flogged. They were willing to go through all of that because they knew that at the core of their message, was the God of the universe who had reached out through his son, Jesus Christ, to bring healing, to restore us into a relationship with him. If God is doing it, it's unstoppable. The faith of the apostles was being put to the test. Because, you know, honestly, it's not when things are going well that you know whether something is true. It's when things are not going well. The truth is revealed and you know what's at the core. We're going through hardships right now and we are still on a mission. God has still called his people to name the name of Jesus, to show mercy in the name of Jesus, to reflect Jesus strong and kind to the world around us and to a world that needs hope. But hardships will reveal truth about you and me. It will reveal whether we really believe this or whether we're just longing for the comforts that make us feel better. 
It will reveal whether we believe in a higher authority. It will reveal whether we believe that God is at the core of what we believe. It will reveal whether we are prepared to be on a mission or if we're just looking for a cruise. You know, we are on a mission at Westview. God has called us to be a people who want to see uh, people of our community, West Mount and the world, flocking to Jesus Christ. He has asked us to be a people who lead healthy conversations about Jesus Christ. And that can happen in so many ways. Right now, we feel limited, but the fact is, you can still have those conversations uh, over the phone, over Messenger, over Zoom, over the fence. Uh, there are ways that we have those conversations about Jesus Christ. And, and sometimes it doesn't start by just naming Jesus. Sometimes it starts by listening. Listening to what it is that somebody is in the midst of themselves. Because there's probably a longing inside of them. And then there's the chance for us to simply talk about what our experience has been. How Jesus has brought strength. How Jesus' kindness has brought healing to us and restored us to a relationship. We're also still on a mission because there are some uh, crucial things that we are doing right now as a church. This past week, we once again ran our food cupboard where we opened the doors of the church to people uh, to drive by and, and receive groceries, food, and some other necessities to be able to sustain their households. Uh, we had a great group of volunteers who were a part of preparing that ahead of time, uh, carrying it out that day, and uh, we have volunteers who are continuing to work on that. And we're going to be hearing more about ways that you can connect with our Food Covered Ministry to bless our neighborhood in the name of Jesus Christ. And part of what happened on the morning that we distributed the food was a chance to check in with people. Uh, we have built relationships with so many people in our community and to find out how they're doing and to remind them that God loves them. Uh, that's why we're doing this. We want God to bless them, to remind them that we're praying for them and, uh, and asking God to intervene in their lives and their situations. We're so glad that we have this wonderful relationship in our community and a chance to speak the name of Jesus and to show his love and mercy. We also have the chance coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time to start what we are calling Alpha Online. And uh, Alpha is a ministry that has run for years. It's a powerful ministry of, of explaining to people what it means to follow Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? Is there a God? Uh, what is this Holy Spirit? And because of the lockdown we're in, we actually are finding that the opportunities are greater than ever to be able to talk about this. Uh, because it's online, it means it doesn't have to be your next door neighbor that you invite to Alpha. It could be a friend or a family member who's halfway across the country or halfway around the world, and you can invite them to join you for this. So stay tuned for that as well. God has called us on a mission and in spite of the hardships, we are going to continue on it together. But the hardships themselves are not a reason to stop. They're actually a reason to keep digging down because they reveal who we really are and what we really believe. We are excited about this. We're excited to have the good news of Jesus Christ to share. And we are praying that together we can be on a mission and bless our neighbors and bless our world in the name of Jesus Christ. So stay tuned, stay safe, and stay the course because life in Jesus Christ is worth it.